Hi, everyone. I want to welcome you back to uh, The Remnant. We're just really honored, myself and Lem, to have Pastors Evan and Shauna Maxwell back again and just to talk with us about what a life in the Spirit looks like. And um, it's just going to be a really down-to-earth talk. We're not looking to get deeply theological or anything like that today. We're just hoping to uh, encourage you guys into the normalcy of the supernatural because I honestly think it's the highest thing that God has for, for people who accepted Christ into their life. A spirit-led, spirit-guided life is the best thing that, the, that God has for you. Lem and I are going to take the next few weeks. If you want to join us, please do. And uh, we're going to be looking at this book written in the 1600s, believe it or not, by a woman named Madame Guion. And we're going to be studying her revelations of a walk with God, um, a walk in the Spirit. And I'll tell you something, if you like deep, you're going to really like this. Uh, she really went for all she could in God. And it's just a terrific book about her experience and getting to know God and how to hear from God on a daily basis, even though life is there. Uh, but Pastor Evan, you kind of, if you don't mind explaining to us, and then Shauna, uh, being filled in the Spirit of God, how and when did that happen to you? Um, well, for me, I was thinking about the question when you were sharing there just now, and a uh, couple things come to mind. One is, like, I think that Jesus demonstrated to us the normal Christian life. Yeah. Not abnormal or not unusual, just the normal Christian life that, you know, and he's our pattern mm. for this life and the way we can walk in the Spirit and be dependent on the Spirit. Yeah. And um, so having said that, I was thinking of a time where, for me, it became really, really real. I'd already been a Christian for about four years. Mm. I was just starting into ministry, and I was still very much operating in, um, I'm just going to say it like this, like in performance, like, you know, yeah. learning to... Um, and, 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 you know, uh, there was just, that was what was going on in my life. Yeah. Like, you know, learning to rely on the Holy Spirit as opposed to Evan. And learning to walk with the Spirit instead of the flesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And learning to keep in step with Him yeah. and what He's doing. And, you know, and I was, I spent a lot of time striving and sweating. And, you know, I wasn't speaking too much yet at that time. And yeah. uh, I remember one particular time, I always worked as an artist. And so I had this... Uh, this thing done up to share with the young people's youth pastor at the time and um so i went to you know set this whole thing up and was really trying to make it um, really good for the kids it was going to be the gospel message mm. and i was just getting ready and i was sitting at the front of the church and the worship was going on just before the uh before i went up to speak and for the first time in my life yeah. that i remember okay I, and I've never had it quite like this again. It was just absolutely amazing. But I started to be aware of his presence after this time a lot more. Mm. Wow. What happened was I was sitting on the front, and it was the first time I heard on the inside of me, like it was like an audible voice. Mm. That's the only way I can describe it. But it was nobody else heard it. Yeah. I thought at the time maybe they, because it was so loud inside. Mm. And, and all it was is the Lord said to me, uh, when you find out how much I love you, you're going to want to serve me forever. Mm. Mm. And in the same breath, he said, when you find out how much I love you, you're never going to be the same. Yeah. And when that happened, for the first time in my life, I felt the presence of God. Yeah. Like it came on so strong mm. from the top of my head right through my whole body. Yeah. It was just like this thick, heavy, like just poured over me and through me. Wow. And um, and I hadn't actually cried since my father died as a young man, right? And I'm talking, and, and right then they handed me the mic. Yeah. Shauna was there. Oh, yeah. They handed me the mic, and they, because this was just happening at the same time, I got the mic, and I'm talking, the wells opened up. Yeah. I mean, every orifice in my body started pouring out fluid. Oh. Like I was sobbing so deep inside. Wow. 
I mean, it was, and I was completely out of control. Yeah. I had no control whatsoever. Yeah. You know, and, and in my mind, things are happening up. I'm like, this is really embarrassing. You know, yeah. but at the same time, I didn't care. Mm. Yeah. Because I could feel his presence and yeah. he spoke to me. Mm. And it was also caught me off guard because he says, when you find out how much I love you, you're never going to be the same. Yeah. And uh, it set me on a journey of really wanting more. And anyways, when, when that happened to me and I got the mic, I, s I learned a very important lesson that night. And, and uh, all I did, instead of making this big presentation that I had prepared, mm -hmm. I shared two scriptures and uh, explained what just had happened to me, what yeah. the Lord said to me. Yeah. And I invited anybody that wanted to get saved. And I had more response that night yeah. wow. than ever before. Wow. And it just showed me that yeah. the Spirit of God is mm -hmm. the answer. Yeah. He's able to do it, mm -hmm. even if it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it doesn't make sense to your rational mind. And I'm not saying, you know, I, I don't believe in, you know, throwing yeah. your, your rational mind away. But yeah. I do believe that we depend on the flesh mm -hmm. way more than... You know, we need to really depend on the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's yeah. by yeah. the Spirit of God. Amen. And our job is to learn to walk with Him and keep in step with Him, whatever He's doing. Yeah. And to stay really, really, really humble. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because we can't do anything apart from Him. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nothing of value. Yeah. For me, the other thing is, is that He wants to honor Jesus mm -hmm. all yeah. the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He brags about Jesus, talks about the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if we keep that in our hearts and say, you know, like, I, I feel like uh, my biggest job is to just make sure that Jesus shines. Mm. Amen. And the Holy Spirit comes right alongside to do that. Mm. And, um, you know, we're, he, he, Jesus demonstrated a life of service. Mm. Yeah. I mean, the creator of the universe yeah. came to serve. Yeah. So I want to serve. I want to lay my life down, and I think the Holy Spirit comes on that. Yeah. I, I, sort of a question here. with I've had some friends who have wanted to be filled in the Spirit of God, and they've made themselves available for that to happen, and it hasn't happened. Is there advice you guys would give to somebody who's in that predicament? They, they're hearing like what you're saying or what someone's going to be talking about the next few weeks or months about being filled in the spirit and they're like hey i want that how do i what do they do in order to receive this gift of the holy spirit and how can they move ahead and not get frustrated at the same time what's your advice for that i well i could uh i i learned through um the toronto blessing yeah and renewal because when I was when I was young, very very young, I accepted Christ when I was probably five mm. or six, and um, and then from that night on, because I so experienced the love of Christ, mm. I wanted to tangibly hold him, touch mm. him, hug him, like yeah. just just kiss his face and just tell him how much I loved him. Yeah. And so every night after I uh, asked Jesus into my heart. I would pray every single night, Jesus, I just want to hug you. I just want to hug you. I just want to see you for real, yeah. mm -hmm. like for real. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know how long it was because you know how as kids, you know, one day seems like yeah. a week, a month or whatever. <laughs> it yeah. felt like mm -hmm. two years later or whatever yeah. of yeah. every night just saying I just. And then one night I went to sleep and I woke up or I, I thought I woke up and I was walking with Jesus on the side of the road back in the days that that Jesus was walking, wow. you know, uh, through Galilee and all these different places I know now. I didn't at that time because I was quite young. Yeah. Anyway, I was so impacted. It absolutely transformed my life from that day to this. Wow. To I, I can't even tell you. And every time I would look at Jesus because he never left my side. He always had his arm around me. Mm. It wasn't, I don't remember a time during then that he didn't have his arm around me. Mm. And every time I would look up at him, he was already looking at me. And every time I looked into his eyes, never once did I feel like ashamed or afraid or condemned or anything. I just knew he loved me. Amen. I just knew he loved me. Yeah. Like totally, completely mm. more than anyone in my whole life. And I have a loving family. I mean, you know our yep. family, and mm -hmm. we're 
we're we're all very very close and mm. stuff like that but the truth is i really didn't even think about them yeah yeah <laughs> my mom later after i woke up and i was <laughs> telling her all about Bob what had Boop. happened and where i went with him and what he yeah. said mm. and what he did and what happened and she was like well what about us like what about i was like mm. um <laughs> i think i was aware <laughs> i had a family but <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't really thinking about you. I'm really sorry yeah. about that. <laughs> because you just, I was lost yeah. in, in him. And in is, the, that a, is that lost. sort of a key yeah. to being filled with him? Is it almost, like you say, almost a willingness to abandon mm. everything else that you have? That's so, I, and I, to make a long story short, that yeah. is exactly, I yeah. know when renewal happened, one of the things that happened to me, because between then as a child and experiencing in him that way and, and being that close to him, I just wanted to go be with him. Yeah. I didn't even want to be here. Yeah. I just wanted to be with him. My parents were freaking because they thought, oh my God, is she going to die? Is this yeah. preparation <laughs> yeah. going to die or something? <laughs> yeah. um, and it wasn't clearly, yeah. but, um, but that, so it was that intense mm -hmm. and incredible like beyond yeah. that you know as time gets on you know when Evan talks about performance mm -hmm. you never mean to like I never meant to it's just if someone said now oh, if you pray every day you're gonna be yeah. closer and all I wanted was closer like you know yeah. what I mean so I pray every day and not that that's a bad thing no, but right. it was like whatever right. was said you just just do this or you yeah. need to do that or you need to do that you just adopt it and then yeah. before long you realize oh my gosh like I just can't I'm, I can't measure up like I yeah. missed my devotions and I did this yeah. and I you know and then all this shame and condemnation starts to come over time yeah and uh, but so when the when the the Toronto blessing happened and the father's heart like he just revealed himself in in a new I want to say new way I mean it, it's not new his yeah. heart's yeah. always been that way but you know I, I realized how far I had drifted yeah, right uh, from from the truth and I recognized there even though by then I had so many boundaries and boxes and stuff mm. that I was terrified of it yeah. in a way because it didn't fit into any of my mm. thinking or yeah. theology or anything at all whatsoever and so I was scared I was angry I, you know all kinds of things yeah but one thing that happened was I recognized when I went to those services and even though crazy things you know seemed to be happening yeah which eventually happened to me <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I have a question um, yeah because some people think some people are spirit filled like I thought I was spirit filled mm. yes and then I had the other experience much later yeah so what is is there a difference like you get spirit filled and then you have this encounter a love encounter Mm. Is it two different things, or is it the same thing? Is it be or was I spiritful before? Because I said to Corey, I don't even know if I was spiritual before. Mm. I, I probably think, yeah. I I I think it's it. Uh, I think it's just kind of more, you know, maybe yeah. more revelation. Yeah. Mm. That kind of. I I don't think it's not that we aren't before because I I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit because yeah. mm -hmm. again that was something when I was a child mm. Mm -hmm. I walked into my mom's room when she was, uh, praying in tongues I was like wow. Yeah. is that and I just wanted it like yeah. whatever God had I just wanted it yeah, yeah. and I know I was yeah. I yeah. know a hundred percent that I was but then you know the issues of life and mm -hmm. oh yeah sometimes religion creeps in on that stuff mm -hmm. and it steals that joy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I think I want I wonder I, I don't have n necessarily an answer but I wonder if what happens is maybe we lose some of the joy of that mm -hmm. through whatever through whether it's people just speak through in life tongues experience. yes yeah speak in tongues. and they don't have that overwhelming yeah. overcoming experience well i'll tell you what what happened to me just real briefly a woman brought her two sons they were older in their 20s out to church they sat in front of us and um neither of them were christians uh in the middle of the service the one fella got up and said i have to go use the washroom we never thought anything of it so he went out to use the washroom, which was the door was behind, behind where I was sitting. He came walking back in. I could hear the door shut behind me, and he hit the floor, concrete floor, and started punching the floor. And I looked behind me, and he was laughing and couldn't stop. Now, he wasn't even a Christian, okay? Yeah. And his brother looked at him and said, what are you doing? And he said, I don't know what to tell you, man. 
He said, it's like I just drank two uh, 12 packs of beer. That's the way he described it. <laughs> because God had just over... Now, his mother was probably praying for him, yeah. Yeah. you know, and brought him out to that. But the joy of God so filled him, he didn't know what to do. So I looked at him, and then it hit me. And for three hours, I was laughing and never wanted it to stop. Yeah. I never wanted the experience of the joy of God, that deep joy ever to stop mm -hmm. in my life. I had been filled, uh, you know, in the spirit and spoke in tongues. And I didn't know that there was more. Mm -hmm. There's something that comes to your life when you experience an emotion from God. Mm -hmm. Not just that being filled, which I, I did experience in speaking in tongues, but, uh, but emotional input from God. Why does he even care? Who cares if I become joyful? Well, he does, mm -hmm. and that's powerful. So that, that took Levin on a different road, and we're here with Evan and Shauna because they represent a movement called Catch the Fire. And that's, well, that's basically just it, isn't it? <laughs> Catch the Fire. <laughs> and uh, their church is Catch the Fire Halifax. You'll find all the, the information about it down, down beneath. Um, uh, you know, Max will put that down on the YouTube information about uh, where it's at and the times of their services. And, well, we encourage you to go because I'll tell you, uh, not specifically at their church, but this movement they're a part of uh, has touched lives all over the world. I'll just say something yeah. in terms of more specifically because yeah. there's, there's, you know, there's so much that you could say or share, you know, mm -hmm. especially if you've been alive for 52 years. Yeah. <laughs> and God, it's quite a journey. Our lives go on. But in reference to those people, I think if I, if, or when I do have people that ask about that, I, I truly believe that when you ask God for a gift like that, that he mm. clearly, clearly uh, has given and wants us to have, Yeah. you know, I, I believe that we receive it. But sometimes there's different reasons why uh, we feel that we haven't, yeah. mm. or maybe there's barriers. So, yeah. and I know that happens. I'm, I'm on a journey with the Lord in terms of, you know, talking to him a lot about healing and different things like that. Shana, what are those barriers? I well, mean, I, I, I mean, because I mean, we may as well be as open as we can be. Okay. Is it just regular, normal sin? Do you know what? No. Well, I mean, it can be absolutely. Yeah. But, but I know, like when I went to Toronto, I can tell you, I'll, from where I was standing, you know, a lot of it was fear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it was of the unknown. I didn't understand it. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if it fit kind of my theology and those yeah. kinds of things. So it scared me, and if that was real, then what about what I presently believe about God? Yeah. Does that mean that that's not real? You know, it, it creates yeah. a lot of questions, which yeah. creates more fear. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's pride. Like, I also, I, you know, when you see someone going over there, like standing over there doing crunchies or laughing <laughs> hysterically for no a apparent reason. Right. You know, it's it's like, well, I want more of God, but I don't want it to look like that. Yeah. And as soon as you start putting barriers or, or as soon as control. you start putting con conditions, mm. control mm -hmm. or whatever, then then suddenly you're the one calling the shots, not okay. God. Okay. So what what happened to me, what happened to me was, uh, you know, here I'd come to this conference and I could see clearly that God was there. I could feel his presence tangibly. Yeah. And enough that I knew deep inside, okay, this feels a lot like when I was a kid, that love, there, mm -hmm. this is real, there's something real about this, but then how do I get it? But I couldn't get out of my own way, yeah. mm -hmm. literally to receive, because I was so busy in my brain thinking, yeah. thinking, 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 yeah. mm -hmm. and instead of just resting and relaxing. Mm -hmm. So often for the, in the beginning, it would take, I'd go through a whole conference, almost miserable the yeah. whole time watching the party going on yeah. and me on the outside kind of watching instead of being, yeah. enjoying it. And yeah. a lot of it was, a lot of it was pride. A lot of it was um, things like fear, a lot, you know, those kinds of things. Shana, I and then I get desperate. And yeah. I think the, the Lord allows us to go through through yeah. that so that we get so desperate yes. and so hungry that yes. finally we relinquish control and say okay you know what right. lord yeah i don't care That's what true. i look yeah. like yeah. i don't care what you do yeah i don't care anything i just have to have you i yeah. have to have more of you and it's almost you like there's that. a fence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's something offensive with everything that's powerful and good mm -hmm. jesus made himself 
or was offensive to a degree. Mm -hmm. And you had to get over it in order to get into the good somehow. I know Shauna grew up a Baptist. What did you grow up, Evan? I'm sorry, I didn't. I, I was, I, I didn't grow up in a Christian. Oh, I'm sorry, so right. Yes, you told us. Background. Yeah, in the Salvation Army, a little bit. A little bit. A little bit in that, yeah. yeah. With friends, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, Baptist, Pentecostal, we're, doctrine is everything. We are repeatedly, you know, reminded of doctrine weekly, mm -hmm. you know, but initially or eventually that's the posts that surround the experience. Mm -hmm. And if there's never an experience, you're still left empty, mm -hmm. you know, and learning how to experience God is really, that's what we're talking about. Guys, what, is it, what does it look like to move in the spirit of God once you've had these experiences? To somebody watching this, this is all brand new mm -hmm. to hear about this. Tell us what that experience is like. Well, for me, I, I think I could sum it up just like this, like it looks like love, like just this overwhelming love for the person that's in front of you. Yeah. And that's what, what I feel like when I'm, you know, even when I'm up sharing with people or talking to somebody, just they have questions or whatever. I, and I think that's what, you know, I, I often think when I read the stories, especially in the Gospels, where Jesus is going around touching people, like he touched people. Can you imagine if you never showed affection to your kids, mm -hmm. if you never embraced your kids? Mm -hmm. Like it would do something, you know, it would really damage them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, to me, it's really that simple. Like our Father, our Heavenly Father models that for us. He wants to embrace us. He mm -hmm. wants to touch us. He wants mm -hmm. to speak to us. It's the, n the most normal thing in the world yeah. to hear our Father's voice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the scriptures say that the thoughts He has about us are more numerous than the stars in the sky and the sand and the seashore, and they're good thoughts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I think for us, it's it's learning to tap into those, you know, that flow of God, yeah. presence of God mm -hmm. for yeah. other people. Yeah. And I think where we get, like Shauna, I thought, described it really well. For me personally, if I get back into striving or yeah. trying to make it happen, it just falls on it. I fall flat on my face. But if yeah. I can just rest in his love for me, mm -hmm. yeah. stay away from performance, yeah. and just flow out of that place, you know, love my wife. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. Love yeah. my kids. Put the Lord first. Mm -hmm. Like love the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then just love the people around me. And yeah. I don't think it's complicated. Like that's what I think Jesus actually did. Yeah. He just went around doing what his father asked him to do, and and mm -hmm. and demonstrated the kingdom of God, which was love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, set people free because he loved them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's if we want to know what the Father's like, he's just like the Son. Mm -hmm. The Son is the exact radiance, the representation of the Father. So when mm -hmm. Jesus was setting the leper free, mm -hmm. or he was touching the sinful woman, and you know everybody else was railing on him, saying, "You know, you don't even know who this is." Obviously, mm -hmm. and and Jesus, you know, he wasn't afraid to break every tradition of the elders, mm -hmm. every religious norm, mm -hmm. to touch the person. Amen. And I think that's what it's it's really about mm. yeah and i i would just um say too like I, I think that goes along with that i think in my mind you know i always kind of looked at the holy spirit as this essence out there somewhere this thing mm. yeah. or the baptism of the <laughs> holy spirit this event yeah. yeah you know the holy spirit is a person mm -hmm. right and he's the one that jesus left this world mm. so that he could come right mm -hmm. and i think even like with this even like in this area, it, I'm still really growing in this, like mm -hmm. in the sense of I'm, I'm really learning to love the Holy Spirit like I love Jesus, like I love the Father. Mm. You know, he always seemed to be that kind of part that was left out a lot of times, you know, when mm. you're taught or whatever, or as this like this, like I said, like it, almost like this event or this mm -hmm. thing you entertain or whatever, whatever, but he's a, he's a person and yeah. he loves us, you know, one thing that the Lord really reminded me about, there were many different things during that visit or dream or whatever I had when I was younger that now as I get older and I think back, I'm like, wow, I had no idea that, you know, this was this or this. And I remember um, kind of at the end of it when I actually, when Jesus ascended, I ascended with him, which is, there's a whole lot of theology in, involved in some of <laughs> that that I, you know, I understand now. But anyways, when 
when I got there and I was standing before the Father, like before God, and I saw Jesus sitting there, but it was like I could still feel him with his arm wrapped around me. And I, I, you know, I didn't really understand when I was a kid what was happening. I could mm. see him and yet I could feel him. It was puzzling and that's mm. what kept me from being afraid because, it, you know, anyway, it's, a, yeah. it's, it's another discussion. Yeah. But, but now, like, I realized that presence, that feeling like he'd never left me, that, whole, that, was, that wasn't just a feeling. That right. was the person of the Holy Spirit. That right. was my confidence that was he was there with me because I was standing with him because he's he's part of me when yeah. I, when I asked Jesus to come into my life and so now like I constantly I'm talking to him mm. all the time well especially now I'm talking to him <laughs> all <laughs> the time yeah. and you know I do I do pray in tongues all the time because mm. there's times I don't know what to pray or yeah. I feel like my prayer is so repetitive it doesn't mean anything because I've prayed the same thing so many times I just go right into praying in tongues because that's where my spirit talks to the Lord completely un yes. hin unhindered and unfettered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, like I, I, I think now more than ever, it's the, is the most important time to um, just really develop that relationship with the Holy Spirit, the same yeah. way as you do when you're. When I was dating Evan, I got to know him mm -hmm. by spending time with him. I got mm -hmm. to know him by asking him questions, mm -hmm. by talking to him. What do you like? What do you and, you know, it sounds kind of funny maybe to some people, you know, Holy Spirit, what do you want to do now? What are you mm. saying right now? Amen. What songs would you like us to sing this week? I know that, you know, you have a plan. You know who you want to bring to the service. Mm. What would please you? What mm. do you want to, you know, and it's just this dialogue that started out with little bits here and there. And yeah. the more you talk to him and the mm. more you spend time talking to him or asking him what he likes or whatever. And and he starts to show you these things. The more you get to know, yeah, you get to know him, and you feel more comfortable with him. Amen. And he still does crazy things sometimes, mm -hmm. you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Like when Evan got healed of the carcinoma. Yes. The first MRI picked up the carcinoma accidentally. They were actually checking out his kidneys. Yeah. Uh, and when they found it accidentally, then they did a second MRI. Yeah. Uh, to like to z zero right in on what what was going on, mm -hmm. how big, what was happening and all of this. And, and then from there into tests and biopsies mm -hmm. and stuff. So we had been praying like crazy. So I had expected, fully expected by the second MRI that was gonna show it's gone. God's done the miracle, yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. So when it came back uh, confirming the first yeah. and maybe a little bit worse uh, in appearance, I was just like, God, like I don't understand what on earth like how can this be so anyway we kept praying because for him that would have been probably a game ender mm. probably mm. very quickly yeah um but anyways we kept praying and god did a miracle he mm. did a, an wow. absolute miracle to this day evans had many conversations yeah. with the surgeon it's completely wow. unexplainable wow. they can't wow. explain it wow um it just it it was gone disappeared biopsies clear even he's had three tests and wow. scopes since it's there's nothing wow so anyway one day he was sharing in front of a group uh about this they'd asked him to come and share you know what had happened mm. and everything and i was just sitting there i was just listening to him and all of a sudden and this is how often how the holy spirit works with me but i mean he he does things differently for people because we're all so unique Amen. and he knows what how to speak to us that's mm. our language you know yeah so anyway, I'm just sitting there. He often gets me by surprise when I'm actually not thinking or not asking something. And so he said, I, he said, do you want to know why? This is in my heart. It wasn't audible, but yeah. I just had this sense. Do you want to know why um, I didn't heal him before the second MRI? And I'm like, yeah, I really would like to know that. That I would like to know that. And he said, I, I didn't because, and this is what I sensed, I, I didn't because... The second MRI confirmed the first so that there could be no mistake yeah. that it was an actual healing. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. No one could say, mm. oh, it's just a shadow. Oh, it's mm. just this. It's just that. Oh, yeah. maybe it never was really there. It was really yeah. there. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I really healed him, yeah. you know. And so I was like, wow, like, I, that is so nice of you to, yeah. to tell me that because I never knew it was just one of those things I left with him. And besides, I was so excited that he healed him in the end. It, yeah. it, it didn't really matter it didn't to matter. me. Yeah. But 
it mattered to him to tell yeah. me yeah. and I was yeah. just like and that's what I like I like th it's those things that like as I'm in dialogue with them through the day I'm like Lord thank you Holy Spirit for yeah. doing that thank yeah, you yeah. for telling me that you didn't have to tell me that yeah you know and I kind of feel like he was almost kind of chuckling you know you want to know now why you know and <laughs> and I think that that's mm. something that Toronto did too I always yeah. saw God or you know like as a serious you know thunder from the sky and don't get me wrong mm. I totally believe in yeah. fear of God I've, I've had it you know I, I but at the same time like he creates all of those emotions including our humor and mm. all yes. of those things and Amen. he is humorous mm. yeah and uh, at times and he I don't know it just makes him more personable yeah I think one other thing too that came to my mind when you guys were sharing and Shauna was just sharing too like a lot of times we analyze way too much yeah and we try to figure things out before we step out and take a risk or mm. yeah. take a step of faith, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, without faith, it, it is impossible to please God. It's just like the scripture's really mm. clear on that, mm. you know? And so I remember, like, with this incident Shauna was talking about, mm. we've, we've gone through this a number of times. Like, I've been really ill over the years, and, and the number of times it was kind of unto death. I shared with you guys mm -hmm. that before and mm -hmm. stuff. I'm not going to get into it. But in this case, you know, because we'd gone through it before, Mm. and I walked with the Lord through it before mm. um, it wasn't the first time so when the doctor called me my family doctor the first time and he goes this is really serious if you don't deal with this now you're going to die mm. and it catches you off guard it was it early in the morning I yeah. just turned the shower on uh -huh. you know fear hit me I mean, I'll be really honest oh, like yeah. it hit me and it caught because I wasn't expecting at all Yeah. and I didn't know yet right and so he, he was the one that let me know and but I but one this is the point I wanted to make is uh, in, in, and then after that we had everybody was praying and stuff like mm -hmm. that but one thing that happened that really helped me through the whole thing and it just shows me how much the father cares about us mm -hmm. and how much he wants to be involved in our lives but we have to be willing to listen you know mm -hmm. it's, it's not something we earn I don't believe it is you know the gift of the Holy Spirit is the reason it's called the gift of the, the person of the Holy Spirit is a gift mm -hmm. because if, if we had a way of earning things from yeah, God, we'd muck it up yeah. completely. It mm -hmm. has to be God yeah. Yeah. towards us. Amen. Like I said, I had the shower on and I went in and got in the shower and just standing there and said, Lord, you know, the truth is this is, I never bash the medical profession mm -hmm. or anything like that. I don't, you know, they're just doing their job and this is what they see. It's literally there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Jesus never condemned anybody for coming to them and saying, Lord, this is this is what he'd say, what do you want? And they say, Lord, I want to see. Mm. Lord, I want this. Lord, I want that. He wasn't condemning them for asking. Mm -hmm. And I said, Lord, this is, I w got in the shower and I said, Lord, this is what they're saying. But Lord, what do you say about this? Mm. Mm. And instantly in my heart, the Lord said, and I'd never heard this before mm. this time, even though I know it's in scripture. He said to me, every day written about you, every day written about you in my book is yours. Wow. And honestly, peace came on me. Yeah. And uh, then there was another time when we got the second MRI back and I still had it. Mm -hmm. Like, and it was a big picture and you could see I f felt fear coming back. And I said, Lord, you know, what do you say? And he said, every day written in my book about you mm. is yours. Mm. Mm. And the, the piece came back again. And then we didn't know how it was going to actually happen. I went for surgery and mm. they found nothing. So, oh, wow. and, and the, yeah. the, the thing Jeez. about it is, is that, wow. that the point isn't that, that the mm. point is like all of our lives, it's about learning to walk with him, mm -hmm. mm. have an intimacy with him, mm. Mm. knowing him, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and I think that, as Christians, we haven't been willing to take the risk of faith yeah. mm -hmm. and to step out and touch somebody, you know, well, what if they don't, uh, what if it doesn't work or mm -hmm. what if they don't receive it? Mm -hmm. Well, if you never step out and pray for somebody, you never stop it, step out and share, you're never going to see anything. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. So that's why I think it's in, and so I've, I've found and we found in our mm -hmm. lives as we've been willing to step out when we feel his presence and, and even if it's scary, he honors that, you know, and you grow yeah. in in learning to hear his voice and learning yeah. to step out, feeling his presence, and then other people experiencing the presence of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to ask um, 
Evan today to pray for you. And when he does, just treat it as though he's right there with you, okay? Because God's given gifts to this couple, and specifically gifts concerning the Holy Spirit and uh, moving and walking and living in the Spirit. You know, if this is resonating with you, then just be open when he prays, okay? I mean, Shauna painted a picture of being drawn in uh, to experiences of the Holy Spirit and in God by your salvation, your point of that arm, like she said, being around you that never, ever leaves you, that person of the Holy Spirit that draws you into deeper places in God. And Evan talked about how it was just incredible to be overwhelmed by the emotions of God the love of God, and to be drawn through that into having a word from God's heart for somebody who seems to be just there, standing in front of him or is around him. So, you know, I don't know what your experience is going to be. Maybe similar, maybe not. But uh, if you're kind of frustrated or whatever in your journey and you're watching this today, just have faith mm. that uh, when he prays a, this prayer for you, it'll be... God's going to help you along in your journey, you know, and uh, in the Holy Spirit and in knowing and learning how to walk in the, in the Spirit of God. So please go right ahead. Yeah. So, Father, we just thank you for your presence. Yeah. And I just pray for all of us and for anybody that's watching this, that, Lord, you would, first of all, create a hunger, yes. an unquenchable desire to know you in a deeper way, to, to grow in intimacy with you. And, you know, all through Scripture, we see examples of people that wanted more, that wanted yes. the, the, the experience as much as you, of you as they could. And, and that's a desire that you actually put in our hearts, Lord mm -hmm. God, even to, to have the, the desire to seek you. So first of all, I pray for all of us and for those who are watching yeah. that you would create a hunger and a thirst for more mm -hmm. to grow deeper in intimacy, deeper in relationship, yes, deeper in love, Lord God. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, you made it really clear that um, even parents, you know, that uh, th they're willing to give gifts to their kids, even though, you know, mm -hmm. like we, we goof up lots of times, mm -hmm. how much more you're willing to give us the Holy Spirit yes. to whoever asks you. Yes. And so, Father, just like Shauna said earlier there, Lord, you know, sometimes we feel like we got to do this or that or jump through this hoop or that hoop or mm -hmm. we got to do this. But it, but there's a reason why it's called the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm. It's a person that comes to us. You know, when we get when we get saved, mm. he fills us and brings that salvation into our lives and we can grow deeper and learn to walk mm. with him yes. and 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 be filled with power to mm. be a witness mm. Mm. you know and we admit freely lord that apart from you we can mm. do nothing amen to that so father amen. i pray that um for the for those who are watching for us here mm. that uh, you know we bow our knee before you yes. Yes, and we lord. just say you're worthy mm. of it all yes and we admit that we need you we need to be filled by you constantly mm. to to learn to walk with you keep in step with you yes you know for a number of reasons one is we won't fulfill the the desires of the flesh it says yes and then and then we're free as mm. we walk in the spirit mm. and to do the things you ask us to do to, to live a holy life to live a life set apart and that the life we were meant to live a fun life yes and you know a life of expectancy that says what's next father what do you want to do today what do you have for us yes and so father i pray for that that the joy of folks salvation to come back the anticipation the expectancy would go right through the roof and yes right now Amen. where they're sitting yes. and yes. holy spirit you would fill them afresh yes with your presence right now yes. in jesus mighty name yes amen guys if this is hitting you know resonating with you uh 10 30 10 30 sunday morning yep. at their church catch the fire halifax the information is below go and visit See, who knows what God could do in your life and in your heart through this ministry that um, has, well, has changed the world, really. Mm. And uh, please feel free to, to visit, call them, write them. All that stuff will just be down below. And uh, have a great week. Uh, we're going to be starting up our book that we just mentioned next week. 
And we're going to have, uh, after that, some more fabulous couples in <laughs> to help to um, encourage us to not give up on living a spirit-filled life. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Guys, we'll see you again next week. Have a great week. Bye-bye.